I'd say it's quite difficult to use feedback when it's concise because sometimes we just get feedback that, for example, says good or not that you have to improve on this, but it doesn't show you how exactly you have to do that. So in this case, um, I'd just email um, the person that's marking you for that piece of course week just to check with them if you, if you can have a chat with them to explain a bit more um, and expand on their comments. Also, it might be sometimes it might be difficult to actually find um, the feedback. So if you can't reach it on Blackboard or you don't know how to, um, you can always ask people in your course or again, you can ask the lecturer if no one else can help you with that. One of the biggest challenges I found with feedback is sometimes you'd have good feedback telling you how to improve, but you might not be sure how to implement that feedback. And I think the best thing to do then is either maybe email whoever's marked it and ask them for some more help or try and arrange a meeting with them, sit down and actually talk through what they meant with the feedback, where and how it can be implemented and just sort of maybe even do a couple of practice goes at trying to implement it, show them that and see if that's what they were after. Uh, one of the really common um, feelings that students have for feedback is that you can get uh, feedback comments that are quite generic and uh, they don't help guide uh, you in any direction to have improve that work. Um, but this is very easily you know, fixed by getting in contact with the person who marked your work, uh, which you should always be able to find on, on the piece of work itself. Um, one of the other things that I think I struggled with, particularly in the first two years of the course, uh, was that because you have a lot of different assessments that are all due in, in fairly short time after one another, um, you can submit one assessment for, let's say, a chemistry lab report, uh, and uh, two weeks later, you've got to submit another one, but you only get the feedback from the first one about a day or so before you have to hand in the next one. So sometimes um, you get feedback in a timely manner, but not quick enough to be able to implement those changes in current work that you're also going to be assessed on. So in those instances, I found self-reflection to be quite a handy tool to try and ident self-identify any weaker areas um, and sort of approach uh, the markers and, and the lecturers who would be assessing that piece of work in advance to see how I could improve what I'd already done. Um, because that really helped me in the first year when we had a lot of assessments in, in quite short order. I think one of the most challenging aspects of feedback is actually implementing it post getting it. It can be something that you just forget about sometimes. Sometimes you're not necessarily sure about the best way of implementing the feedback you have been given. So I think it's really important to keep a log or record of certain bits of feedback that you have so that you don't repeat those mistakes again and anything that you didn't understand or know how to then transfer across to the next piece of work make sure that you get the help of your peers or your academic tutor or somebody else to help you through that process to make sure that you actually implement those that feedback that you've got otherwise feedback is pointless. Mm -hmm.